So in this video, we'll be taking up the second homework sheet on solving polynomial equations. So this sheet, uh, we're focusing on the word problems, okay? So if you're able to solve polynomial equations, you should be able to apply that skill set and solve these word problems. So the first one, we have uh, a silo for grain storage. Um, the hardest part to all of these problems is to generate the, cor the correct equation that models the situation. Okay, so if you can generate the correct equation, the solving process is very, very um, uh, repetitive. Okay, that, there's not much creativity involved with solving uh, a polynomial equation. But the part that requires you to really think about the problem is, is interpretation of, of the words and generating the correct model. Okay, so that's by far the hardest part. So if you can do that, then um, these, these eight problems should be pretty straightforward. Um, for all of these, I didn't add a let statement, so uh, that's my disclaimer. You have to add your own let, uh, let statement for the variables, okay? So let r represent the radius of, um, of, the, of the silo. Okay, so I generated the volume for the silo, uh, which is found by using the sum of the cylind cylinder and the hemisphere. Uh, you need to know the formulas for the volume of a cylinder and a hemisphere. Um, if we gave this to you on a test, uh, we would probably give you the formula for the volume of a cylinder and a hemisphere because um, we don't really expect you to mem remember that from grade 9. Okay, so after I generated the equation, I said equals 684 pi, solve, 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 solve. Uh, these are negative, so radius can't be negative, so uh, yeah, there's not much to say there. The radius has to be greater than zero. Okay, that's why we rejected it. Question two, we have that classic open top box problem. So uh, I generate the equation, solve the equation, watch your algebra, uh, and then factor, 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 and then I generated... Um, I found the solution, so I got 3, 17.8, 08, and 14.92. So this 17.8, I have to reject this because x, if you look at the box, or sorry, if you look at the cardboard sheet, it has to be uh, from 0 to 10. So the squares that you cut out from the corners could either be 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters or approximately 4.92 centimeters by 4.92 centimeters. Okay, so for question 3... Distance from the harbor, one is at the harbor. So this one's pretty straightforward. The factoring was very straightforward. Uh, they gave you the model. So if they gave you the equation, you don't have to find it. You just make use of the equation. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. So I would argue three is much easier than one and two. Question four, um, debatable as whether this is a word problem. Uh, they gave me the zeros, they gave me a point. So basically, you have to find the equation for that specific uh, polynomial function and then solve for x given y is 120. So really not much to say here. Yeah, th this one uh, is uh, debatable as, a, as to whether this is a word problem. Okay. Let's look at question 5. Okay. So five, when has the, how long does it take the plane to fly 4,088 kilometers? So set equal to 4,088, the model is given to you. So this question, I would say once again, it's easier than question one and two. Uh, it is, the, like I said, the hardest part is really generating the model. If, if they give it to you, there's, it really eliminates half the amount of thinking. So solve the equation, I got these values which I have to reject because in the question they say t is only uh, acceptable when it's from 0 to 10. So since that's the case, the answer is 7 hours. Okay, question 6. So another question where the model is given to us. So uh, 172, sorry, 17,200 bottles were sold. So what's the price? So solve for x. If d of x is 172, ooh, I can solve this. I can factor by grouping, much, much easier. And you'll find that it's either $3 or $8 for that sunscreen bottle. 
Okay, question seven is another very classic uh, test question. You have two boxes. Um, so the original box, its dimensions are consecutive integers, uh, where the length is the greatest integer of the three, greatest of the three integers, and the height is the least. And then they modify the dimensions uh, by in, in order to make a larger box. So they tell me that the larger box is 456 cubic centimeters greater in volume. So you can generate this equation, and from here, you solve the equation. So expand, 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 set equals zero, and you end up with a quadratic equation. So that's actually pretty straightforward. Um, and then once you solve for x, you can solve for the dimensions of the original box and the larger box. So this question is actually easier because when you solve the equation, you end up with a quadratic. So usually, if this is a test question, we change it to a cubic, and you can create a cubic by not only uh, increasing the dimensions, you double one of the dimensions. If you double dimensions, this will be like, for example, the height will be, instead of x, it'll be 2x. And then you'll realize that the x cubed terms won't cancel each other out. Um, so then you'll be left with a cubic equation. So you can try, I, I think in the textbook there, there are more of these, but you can make one yourself if you're interested. Or get your friend to make one. How you make them is you just make up some random numbers. So let's say, uh, ask your friend to pick three consecutive integers. I don't know, let's say four, five, six. And then you change these. You take the first dimension. Let's say it's a length, okay? I don't know, let's say length, width, and height. So you take the length, length and increase that by two centimeters. And then the width, increase it by eight centimeters. And take the height and say you double it. Okay, so so obviously you tell, don't tell your friend what the numbers are. <laughs> that would that would give the answer away. So you tell them that the original box is three consecutive integers, and the newer box is obtained by. Um, oh, so sorry. One more try. The original box is three consecutive integers, with the length being the smallest and the height being the greatest. Uh, the length is increased by two centimeters. The height is increased by three centimeters, and the sorry. The width is increased by three centimeters, and the height is doubled. And then um, the new box, how much is the new box greater? The new box is greater by 456 cubic centimeters. And if with that amount of knowledge, you should be able to solve for the dimensions of the original box and the larger box, okay? So you can have fun and make your own questions. You don't need to... Uh, you don't need to use a textbook for these box questions. All right, question eight. Uh, three consecutive odd integers, uh, and the product is 105. What are the three integers? So this is a very classic spin-off on the grade nine question, because in grade nine, we'll say the sum of three consecutive odd integers is 27. What are the three odd integers? Something like that, okay? so. We change it to grade 12 by going from sum to product, okay? So without thinking about the, without doing the math, you should already say, you know, there should be only be one combination of values, okay? There should only be one uh, answer here, even though it's a cubic, because how can you multiply three odd integers in different ways to get 105, okay? Um, yeah, it's just just if you if you think about it, it, it just there's only one way to go about it. Okay, so uh, I generated so mine. I let x be the middle of three cons of three consecutive odd integers. Okay, the middle of three consecutive odd integers. Uh, I did that way because uh, the expansion is easier because I get a difference of squares. It's just easier to expand that. But if you most students will change it to x x plus 2 and x plus 4, okay? Uh, but I prefer what I did, uh, but we'll get to the same answer. Anyways, um, I factor using factor theorem, and then I notice that this quadratic factor won't give me any real roots, so the middle of the three consecutive odd integers is 5, which means the three integers are 3, 5, and 7. Okay, so 
hopefully you're able to generate the models and the, fa the, the factoring and solving part is um, very straightforward. And like I said earlier, if you cannot factor, like go back to those, those lessons because this whole chapter relies on your ability to factor, solving polynomial equations, solving uh, the word problems, and if I ask you to graph from standard form, if I ask, and the next lesson, which is solving inequalities, everything relies on your ability to, uh, to factor, okay?